Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of The Cinematic Show. I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Now, Marvel fans have been calling for Black Widow to get her own movie ever since she first appeared in Iron Man 2. However, we're now closer than ever to seeing that become a reality, because Marvel has hired screenwriter Jack Schaefer to pin a Black Widow solo film. Some people might say they're doing this only because of the success of Wonder Woman, so now they feel safe making a female-led film. However, keep in mind that they announced Captain Marvel way back in 2014, and the Black Widow movie has been in development for almost 10 years now. In fact, during Phase 1 of the MCU, they had Nicole Perlman write a spec script for a Black Widow movie, before she ever did Guardians of the Galaxy or Captain Marvel. So this is something that Marvel's been wanting to do for a while. And if we've learned anything about Kevin Feige, it's that he won't make a movie unless he believes in the story. So in my opinion, the fact that this movie has taken so long to get made just tells me that they couldn't find a story that they wanted to tell. But thankfully that changed. According to Justin Kroll, Feige met with Scarlett Johansson back around Thanksgiving to discuss what direction they wanted to take this movie. And as soon as they found a story they both wanted to tell, they hired a screenwriter to write the script. So it seems like they're really serious about doing this movie. Plus, it makes a ton of sense. Back in 2016, Scarlett Johansson became the highest grossing actress ever. Anyway, since this movie is now in active development, I decided to make this video talking about what I want to see in a Black Widow movie. And first things first, I want this to have a female director, which it most likely will. And my number one choice is Michelle McLaren, who directed some of the best episodes of Breaking Bad. And she was actually signed on to direct Wonder Woman before Patty Jenkins, so she's clearly shown an interest in exploring the superhero genre. Also, she's proven that she's more than capable of handling highly suspenseful moments that are inevitably going to come with a spy thriller. Another option would be Jennifer Kent, who directed The Babadook and was one of the top contenders to direct Captain Marvel. So clearly she's already on Marvel's radar, so those are two names I'd keep an eye on. Now, as far as the plot, a lot of people are speculating that this will be a prequel movie exploring Black Widow's origins, but I don't think that's the case. Word on the street is, we're going to learn a lot more about Black Widow's past in the next two Avengers films, so there's not really a point in going back to her past in her own movie. I mean, we can include some flashbacks in the movie, but I think it makes a lot more sense to have her continue on the path that she's currently on. Anyway, so this movie will obviously take place in Phase 4, after Avengers Infinity War and after Avengers 4. So at this point, Black Widow could very well be one of the only remaining original team members from the first Avengers. And since she's most likely going to lose several of her friends over the next two Avengers films, I think it would make sense for her to kind of explore her past, maybe go back to Russia, you know, trace back her roots, because at that point, she won't really have much left. So whatever life she had back then, whatever family or friend she may have had back then, it would make sense for her to go seek all of that out. So I think that's kind of where this movie should pick up, her kind of exploring her past. However, while she's doing that, she discovers that there's a new Black Widow named Yelena Belova, who actually trained at the Red Room, which is the same facility that Natasha trained at that we saw in the flashbacks in Age of Ultron. Anyway, so this younger Black Widow, played by Saoirse Ronan, is working for Yuri Stalienko, who's played by Ed Harris. And this guy is a dangerous Russian spy who has his hands on the serum called the Deathless Frenzy, and it sends its subjects into this unstoppable blind rage. And he's wanting to use it on America, who's at its most vulnerable since a lot of the Avengers were killed in the last two Avengers films. So Natasha, once she catches wind of all of this, takes it upon herself to stop them. Since she was trained at the same place that this new Black Widow was trained, she feels like she's most qualified to handle this. However, before she can do that, she needs to go back to the Red Room, where it all started, and confront her former trainers, Madame B and Ivan Petrovich, and get the answers that she needs. And by the way, those two characters would be played by Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland. Now, let me explain all of my casting choices for this. First of all, I picked Ronan, because she's one of the best actresses of her generation. And she already showed off her action chops in Hannah, which is one of the best action films of this century. Then there's Madame B and Ivan Petrovich, who both appeared in the flashback in Age of Ultron. And in that 
that they were played by Julie Delpy and Julian Bleach, but the events in those flashbacks took place about 20 years ago or so. So having Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland, who are roughly 20 years older than the actors that played them before, would make sense. Now as for Madame B, she's a little bit more evil, so maybe she's one of the antagonists of this film. But as far as Petrovich goes, I picture him being much more protective of Natasha, because in the comics, this is actually the character that found her as a baby and took her to the Red Room. So I imagine him kind of being this mentor figure to Natasha that's trying to help her and do what's best for her. And maybe even he dies at one point, sacrificing himself for her. Maybe he's even the reason that she starts to seek out her past after Avengers 4. Because since most of her friends from the Avengers are now dead or gone, this guy might be the only family that she has left. Also, with Ronan, Mirren, and Harris in the cast, that would add three more Oscar-nominated actors to the MCU, giving them a grand total of 48. And Mirren would become the 18th Oscar-winning actor to join the MCU. Now also, like I said, there could be some cool flashbacks in this movie. For instance, it would be interesting to see the mission that Black Widow talked about that involved the Winter Soldier. It would also be cool to see how she was recruited to S.H.I.E.L.D., which would be an opportunity for Nick Fury and Hawkeye to pop up as well. So there's potential to see some familiar faces in this movie without taking away from the fact that this is Black Widow's movie. Now the story I came up with is kind of a combination of Widow vs. Widow and the finely woven thread storylines from the comics. It would basically be like the MCU version of the Bourne movies. It also gives them a chance to introduce some other Russian characters from Marvel, like Gremlin or Crimson Dynamo or Red Guardian. There are plenty of heroes she could team up with and side villains that she could face throughout the film. There are a lot of possibilities. Anyway, what do you think of my ideas? Would you want to see that in a Black Widow movie? Or do you have something else in mind? Let me know in the comments section. Also, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching this episode of The Cinematic Show. Until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Music